Hello, real estate industry. Uh, welcome to the Real Estate Tech Mergers, a conversation between T360, Boomtown, and BrokerMid. I'm Travis Saxton, Senior Vice President of Technology Consulting at T360, and I'm here with my esteemed colleague, uh, VP of Back Office, Jonathan Peterson. And Jonathan, this is, this is pretty fun for us because this is one of the first acquisitions or talks that we're doing where it's just the perfect blend of our skill sets too. And so um, I'm, I have the pleasure to introduce Greer Allen, CEO of Boomtown, the aggressor in this conversation of acquisitions, and uh, one of a mutual client of Boomtown and Brokerman, Brad Nix of Path and Post. So um, welcome Greer and Brad, thanks for being a part of the conversation. And feel free, Jonathan, introduce our other guest, yeah, our other guest is Andrew Chichavoy from uh, Broker Mint. Uh, Broker Mint's one of the reliable and very dependable systems that's been on the market for a while, but like growing quietly, I would say. And uh, we're excited to have this. I think, like to your, this is a really exciting acquisition. We see a, a lot of benefits from this this uh, this merger. Yes. So not all mergers are created equal, and that's one of the main things that we want to discuss today. Um, so, fellas, thanks for joining us. And we're going to get started here with uh, the, the biggest trend in probably real estate technology. I kind of identified this about five months ago where there was this, this escalation of activity and momentum. And so I use the hashtag on Facebook, the year of the tech acquisition. And it just keep, I just keep using it and using it. And now I've got like a thousand or more um, references and people sharing it. So it's, it's happening. But you know what's happening with all of these tech acquisitions and why? And one of the things that I think JP and I could probably point to, and you guys have seen this when we launched the T3 Tech Marketplace, is we're tracking now 1,021 real estate technology products across 95 categories. And it's probably just a few too many. And I think outside capital and people are seeing real estate technology as ripe for consolidation. Is that what you're seeing too, Greer and Andrew? Uh, yes, certainly, Travis. Thank you for having us. And um, yeah, that's definitely what we're seeing. Obviously, there's there's not a day that goes by, or, or at least every other day, you're seeing another acquisition uh, happening out there in the space. It's a result of, you know, there's there's a lot of newer money that's coming into the space, whether that's in the you know sort of tech enabled brokerage world, and and um, and you know you know like you said, there's a lot of fragmentation in the space, meaning that there's a lot of different options and and that's quite frankly a, a thing that we see with brokers and teams, uh, a real challenge for them to understand, you know, you know, which technology is the right technology and the busy lives that they live is hard to evaluate everything that's out there. Yeah, I, I see. We, we, we kind of look at technology acquisitions in a little different calendar, like March to March, because that's when we publish our T3 Tech 500, which both of you firms are um, are. Uh, proud recipients of the Tech 500 award. And um, so this slide, I know it's really wordy and we're not gonna read it, but um, it's a good screenshot material if you're out there on the webinar. Uh, there's 28 acquisitions that have affected or touched the T3 Tech 500 in the last 12 months. And um, boy, it's it's been active. And obviously there's different types. We see major brokerages and franchises coming in. And we'll talk about that. We see um, uh, venture capital and PE firms rallying resources. And then we do see a lot of technology companies acquiring other technology companies too. So major momentum here in this space. Um, obviously, the, a lot of talk has been on things like CoStar and, um, and their moves that they're making or Lone Wolf and CoreLogic, some of the, the big, huge um, acquisitions and Zillow and Showing Time as an example. So we've had a lot of momentum here. Um, and have, have any of these jumped out at UJP2 as like, these could be major significant changes for our industry? Yeah, I mean, there's a few, um, you know, Compass Acquiring Glide is a really interesting one that just happened, as well as, you know, Move Guru who acquired Homekeeper. There's kind of changes the, the landscape a little bit there for mover concierge programs. There's a lot of interesting, yeah, there's still a lot of interesting movement happening. And obviously the one we're currently talking about is very exciting, I think, for just being a, uh, an acquisition that makes a lot of sense, really marries up two very solid products to have something for brokers. So, so Brad, um, this is probably a good segue to you. Uh, 
J JP just mentioned that this one makes a lot of sense. And when we first saw this, we were both just like, uh-huh, yep, that makes a lot of sense. And, and we see a lot of tech. And so talk to us a little bit from your perspective as a client, a mutual client, um, tell us a little bit about your brokerage and then also how you use the products and then what has this meant to you? Yeah, so a little quick background. Path and Post is, started as a team um, under the ERA franchise uh, back in 2013. And we launched that new brand new team on the Boomtown platform as our chosen CRM and website of choice. We were the top producing team in the ERA franchise for uh, four years prior to going independent back in 2016. We, we left that franchise, went independent. Um, the year before going, we started looking at a better way to track our own numbers on the transaction management side. And that's when we added Brokerman to the tech stack. So prior to launching our independent brokerage, we were running both tools as a team. And since then, we've continued to use, you know, everybody, everybody in real estate knows you've got to manage leads and you've got to manage transactions. <laughs> And these are the two key tools in our tech stack to do both of those things. And we've grown, you know, since we launched the brokers last year, we did 325 transactions right at hundred million, just to give some context in North Atlanta on these platforms. And, and when you first launched the platform, was it because of the integration between the two products or did the integration come afterwards? Integration came afterwards. They were not connected at all. We needed to track both things and, and for you know, really good reasons. And we were just looking for best in class um, in, in both categories and, and landed with Broker Mint, you know, unknowing that they would ever connect to Boomtown. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a good testament to both products. Mm -hmm. and, um, and obviously we've known, T360 has known Boomtown and Broker Mint for the longest time and two class act companies, but products as well. And um and so let's dive a little bit deeper now into these acquisitions. And, and um, I've got an interesting slide next where we're going to talk about the different types of acquisitions. This one's super technical and really talks about, you know, um, when there's controlling interest or strategic transaction. And for, for real estate, I think it's just a little too meaty. So we're going to translate this for you and put it into layman's terms of what we see at T360 in real estate um, uh, acquisitions. And so there's really four that happen, four types. The first one is probably the most common, the buy and hold, where you get venture capital firms, PE firms, and they buy companies and they, they really hold them. There's not a whole lot of uh, reinvestment into those companies, but they're also not axing the staff and, and cutting costs and stuff like that. It's a really a buy and hold strategy. And so, you know, what are some of the things to watch out for if, if that happens is really, you know, are there any major changes? Um, if you're working with a firm that gets acquired and you're looking at what type of firm is acquiring it and what does that mean to me? Those are questions that you should ask yourself. Um, the second one is growth unification. Th these are more commonly done amongst technology companies and then some aggressive PE firms like to like to invest and grow. This is what we're seeing here as is evidenced by Boomtown and Brokermit. And Greer, I'll ask you the question here. Um, clearly, this is your strategy. Like unification is your word of the year at Boomtown, I think now. And so what does unification mean to you and 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 why Brokermit? Sure. So, um, so I'll take the unification question first, and, and this is uh, this is Boomtown's third acquisition, and, and our first acquisition was a, a small company called um, Real Contact, and they had uh, great technology that that really enabled um, you know concierge services, so the ability to uh, to help our customers by by you know qualifying their leads either through text message or phone conversations. And then, um, and then on the flip side of that, giving them leads that are agent ready or, or just, you know, ready to speak to an agent. And, uh, and so this just greatly improved the, improved the, you know, the, the viability of the leads that our agents on our platform were receiving. And so we started off by having that system and, and, you know, just having an integration there. What happened is the, the agent facing aspect of, of, um, of real contact was outside of the Boomtown platform. And so what we soon realized right after that, uh, Travis, was that, you know, that this wasn't creating the best agent experience. 
And so that's when we coined the term internally unification. We wanted to unify the agent experience. So the agent didn't have to go outside of Boomtown to interact with that concierge. And there's some, there's some nuances to the way that that works because the agent is able to actually see the conversation in real time as the concierge is interacting with that consumer and can also take that conversation over. So, so we really wanted to invest into that. And as a result, we've got over 40% of our customers that have adopted what we call success assurance today, which is, which is you know, sort of what we now name the package that, you know, that includes the core Boomtown system functionality, as well as the lead concierge and qualification service. And so, so that really was, was highly successful. And, and everything we do here at Boomtown is around making the and successful, our brokers and our team customers successful. And so we knew that be, being able to have that unified experience for agents was critical. And that's the same way that we're viewing uh, brokerment as well. And um, the so second question that you asked Travis was around why, you know, why, why brokerment? And, um, and, and really this leads back to what our clients were, were asking us for. Um, you know, we have to, you know, oftentimes kind of, you know, pick through this and try, try to figure out where their pain points are. And, and Brad can probably talk to these a lot better than I can, but, but just knowing how much brokers and team leaders live in spreadsheets that are outside of their core systems and platforms is just, is, is really monotonous and time consuming in terms of having to export and merge the data um, and, and what we found was just a, a, was a major gap in, in the industry of, you know, you've got these, you know, these best of breed front office platforms out there and then, and, and, you know, and best of breed back office platforms, but they're, they're two totally different uh, mindsets in terms of how you build software. And so that led us down the path of, hey, do we want to build or do we want to buy? And, and in this case, uh, we, it was an obvious, obvious answer that, you know, hey, let's, let's go find a company that, that's really done a fantastic job with this. Um, I called up Andrew. We had, you know, we'd known each other for, you know, probably, you know, you know, a handful of years, I'd say, Andrew, and had, you know, previous conversations. I demoed their product. We'd done, you know, obviously been through the integration um, a long time ago. And, uh, and just seeing what they had built out on their platform since the last time I saw the product, even, you know, 18 months prior, what just really blew my mind. You know, we, we kind of went out there looking for transaction management. And what we found with Brokerment was transaction management, commission automation, agent onboarding, all the way back into, you know, full-blown accounting functionality that, you know, honestly, I'd never seen in a cloud-based platform all-in-one solution for back office i'd never seen i'd never seen anything like it before and so that was really the uh the why uh, on on brokerment because you know combined with boomtown's you know full front office uh solution um we saw the ability to bring together that and and really truly create this unified um you know front office and back office solution and and really create a category of one that that provides immense value proposition to our customers and, and Brad, from your perspective, now you've got two, two great products that are working together. What efficiencies are you seeing then in the conversation, kind of playing off of this unification theme again? We'd love to hear from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, we were running both platforms prior to a, an integration at all and, and you know, relied heavily on them, it, it, essential to our business. As soon as they did the kind of API integrations, it, our efficiency, escalated right away. Um, right now, we're currently using the push from Boomtown as the starting point because that's where the consumer relationship is managed. Once they, we get a transaction started there and it goes pending, it pushes directly into Brokerman. We're claiming that, accepting it on the back end. So really the handoff from an agent to a back office staff member is a click of a button. And it can't get any more simple than that. <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah. So really quickly on the last two types of acquisitions and Andrew, you probably were even approached with opportunities to sell to brokerages and franchises over the last two years. You know, what kind of challenges do you see when that does happen? Because usually what that means is the product becomes an internal focused product and, um, and then you've alienated a lot of your clients. Eventually your cl those clients maybe go away and you become an in-house 
team of a brokerage or franchise. So um, from your perspective, is that, you know, is that in the best interest of your clients? Uh, you know, take us through your, your experience with this. That's a great question, Travis, and thanks a lot for inviting to attend this, this webinar. I guess, you know, in terms of the overall strategic approach to it, because we've been always thinking here at BrokerMint, how we can make this a long-term investment, because we love PropTech, we love helping brokerages. And that's been our primary focus here. And what we learned that as we kept growing the, the business, kept growing the, the technology itself, you realize that there are different types of acquisitions and different ways to look at this. We never really proactively pursued any opportunity, but as things unfolded, we realized that typical franchise type of acquisition, not probably the most exciting what you felt was for broker men, because again, at that point in time, you typically see a lot of limitations just because of competing with other brokerages and um, taking that to into consideration. We realized that as we started back in 2014, we primarily focused on all individual independent brokerages and teams. And that's for up until 2017, 2018, around 80% of our client base was individual brokers. So that was more of like a interesting move to pair brokerments with a potentially franchise and ultimately introduce a lot of risk to all the clients that we had at that time. So that's where, again, we did see um, a lot of interest, but we never really pursued that opportunity because we realized it would be just pure product acquisition, not really the, again, clients and pretty much, you know, no next step potential. We've seen a lot of acquisitions like that where, again, post acquisition, pretty much, you know, dead end for the product. Great. Um, Brad, I would love to hear from your perspective too. You know, what would have happened if BrokerMint was bought by a competitor? You know, like, I mean, just openly and honestly. Yeah, no, you you have that fear as, as we go and, and, and pick the platform to begin with. We're like, okay, how does this end, right? I know how it starts. I've seen their onboarding process. It looks great. How does this end? Right. Yeah. So it's always a, it's always a, a hesitation when you pick a platform It's like, all right, what's their exit strategy? Where do you go? So you start getting better at asking questions on the front end. So you don't get sideswiped on the back end. And yeah, that, that would have been a scratch your head. What are we going to do next kind of moment? Had they been acquired by a competitor? And yeah, we use a lot of other tools that, you know, we've experienced that. And, and honestly, sometimes we're okay with it, depending on who that is and how it's used. And really it's per local market. Sometimes that competitor may be a real big influence in, you know, a California market where they're not much here in Atlanta, for example. So it's not a big deal to me. Um, other times we've bailed when it, that's happens. Like, yeah, we're done. And we'll just pick another platform. So, yeah, I mean, who, who acquires them matters. And I don't, I don't think I could have picked a better partner here because I was just fortunate. I picked these two platforms independently. They ended up with an integration and then they ended up with an acquisition. Like that's a, a Nirvana moment for me as an independent to, to have your favorite platforms get married. <laughs> it's, like are, it. it's like your kids I, are getting married and you. And yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I well, think the other thing to add real quick, Travis, under the right. internal usage and absorption is that a lot of times it'll also be talent acquisition that falls under that where a company is, is just bought purely for the talent and the, the technology is, you know, sort of phased out or gotten rid of. So that falls under that internal usage absorption as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is obviously identified at, even by us as a match made in heaven. And so <clears throat> obviously Boomtown, for those of you unfamiliar, um, I'm sure most people are, but very powerful lead generation, consumer website, CRM, uh, marketing automation platform. And you can see some of the buckets here. Guru, you've built a wonderful business. And then JP on the Brokerman side, your domain, um, back office solution. And take us through what Brokerman does. And let's talk yeah. a little bit about long term. Yeah, I think what's exciting about Brokerman, and I've, I've always been interested in what they do, because that's obviously what my background is, but it's, it's, you think of it as the engine in your car. I think a lot of times people think of back office as uh, it's a necessary evil, but the reality is it's, it's more accurate to say it's, it's the engine that runs your office. And so with that, they kind of take the operating side of things, the transaction management, commission management, accounting, reporting, all the agent management and onboarding, 
and really streamline that efficiently. So that's where I see this being a really great synergy of these two companies that do really well. Andrew and his team have done a really excellent job at what they do. And it's exciting to see these two companies come together. Yeah. So Andrew Greer, either of you, you know, feel free to comment on, you know, the in the now, because right now this is where you're at. And eventually we're, we're moving closer to a uni unification. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, what your users can um, kind of conceive of or grasp now, and then we'll go to where we're going. Sure, I can, I can go ahead for your... Okay, I'll, I'll lead this one off. No, uh, listen, I mean, like, like, like y'all both said, you know, it's, it's, uh, it really is sort of that match made in heaven type situation, um, you know, and it really gives us the ability across the combined organization to really think about innovation, um, you know, not just in, in, in the area, in one area, uh, necessarily, it's, it's across the, the, the front office and back office now, uh, where we can innovate and, and create better products for agents, create a better consumer experience by, you know, unifying that. So, so, you know, in, in terms of what we can grasp today, just being able to, you know, just being able to, uh, you know, just marry the data between these two platforms in a, in a more significant way. We already have a two-way synchronization between, you know, Boomtown and Brokerment um, as it, as it exists in the integration today, but, you know, we're looking at workflows. We're looking at, you know, how can we save Brad and his agents time? How can we provide him with better reporting and insights into his business that you just can't get through a, you know, a, a simple bi-directional sync integration. You really have to go to that unification level to get there. And so, you know, from, you know, from what we do and, I, and I'll, and I'll say it right here. I mean, it's, you know, it would have been, yeah, you know, just the mindset and just the, the um, you know, kind of the knowledge that, you know, that, you know, that I've gained just on, you know, on back office uh, through this process. Um, you know, I just, I, I really realized how much I did not know about the back office workflow of a, of a residential real estate brokerage and team, I'm honestly. You. I I'm mean, it you. was, yep. I was blown away at, at what all, you know, goes into building the right type of product, um, you know, in this space and having the configurability, whether that's on the commission automation side or, you know, or how different brokerages structure their businesses to make sure that, you know, on the accounting side, you can have the ledger set up for the, you know, the entire brokerage or, or teams within the brokerage or, you know, for multiple brokerages that might be part of the same family of brokerages. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And, um, and that's one of the key learnings that I've had so far is just how much, how much of a difference there is in between the front office and the back office. Uh, but as, as we kind of continue to cross pollinate between Andrew's team and, and, and the Boomtown team, you know, the, the sparks are starting to fly, I'd say, in terms of the, the opportunities that we're seeing. And I'll let Andrew um, chime in as well here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Greer. And that's a great recap. And I believe that all this rocket science that you've been, I guess, you know, exploring, learning and building helped us a lot in terms of extending the platform. So we've been growing a lot last few years, adding different modules, learning how we can, again, improve operations and add more automation. So overall, recent, again, hot market, unification, consolidation, brought us to the point where partnering up, you know, made a lot of sense. So again, having, as of right now, uh, we have pretty decent bi-directional integration between the products. It's really great that he, we helped, um, I guess, you know, we made the right choice many years ago when we started helping Boomtown, um, exploring API connectivity and options of that nature and building the integration. By the way, that was our first bi-directional integration that we ever designed. And that was the since, that was the first that was the first integration. Um, you know, we we did a lot to develop out our API and and released it. And, and Brokerment was our first act, uh, our first integration as well. But most people don't don't realize that there are four different levels of integration, like. And, and that's, that's a problem that a, co a company like Brad or um, Path and Post can get into is like you sign a contract and Boomtown says to, says to Brad, yeah, we've got an integration with Brokerman, but is it actually 
detailed out in the agreement. Uh, and so you have this black hole of like, what does that mean? Who manages it? Do I have to pay for it? Do my users have to pay for it? Like there's so many gray areas. And we're actually writing an article on this at T360. It comes out next month. That's all about what are those black holes in vendor contract negotiation that you can avoid to have a happy, healthy relationship. But in this, in this scenario, you've got single sign-on or even a link inside of a platform to get to another platform. You've got one directional, bi-directional, and then you've kind of got a more data-centric, um, uh, totally immersed um, co-product co uh, mingled together. And so, and that's where we're obviously going with the unification of these two platforms. And so, I mean, I, I can see where there's a lot of misconception in the industry and even uh, JP, who sees a lot of back office companies that have front office. And this is probably the epitome of Greer and I's experience is like, I see a lot of tech and I don't know back office. I'll say that openly and publicly, but that's JP's domain. But I, I had imagined that within multiple organizations that happens too, even the big ones where it's like, you've got your back office division and your front office and they just kind of run separate. So it's going to be nice to see this come to fruition and I know JP's got blind spots in our industry, like closed loop reporting is one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, agent onboarding into um, front office solutions and websites and stuff like that. Another black hole typically um, reporting. Uh, I think it, it, there's, there's several in the commissions and commission calculations and stuff like that. But, but man, wouldn't we all, wouldn't Brad love to see a lead to close report that, could basically from start to finish say and here's my Facebook ad spend and then here's what it means to my bottom line. And I think you just said what is the biggest black hole. I think everybody really <laughs> wants right. the NDN solution where I can say a lead comes in when when I spent money with Zillow or wherever, where did that what what did that translate to in dollars? And so that's where I see this this merger here is exciting for that reason. It creates more of a true operating system. I've always hated the term back office. I feel it's like too limiting and it's usually thought of as like, like I said earlier, the necessary evil of what I have to do to run my business. I don't see it that way. I see it if you're creating a true unified operating system for a brokerage. And, and Andrew, he just said something back office. We, we talked about back office on an innovation session we did with Brokerman a month or two ago. And one of the takeaways was, you know, we saw about uh, you know, five, 10 years ago, in the last five to 10 years, I should say, that there was really eight or nine players in the space. And you were one of them, one of those um, kind of the late to that first batch, but innovative, sexy user interface. You know, I'm not calling you sexy, Andrew, but sexy user <laughs> interface. And, and ultimately, <laughs> it's like, it's basically that now we've exploded and there's, tw I think, 22, right, JP, on the 17, team? There's 17, right, 17 right now with like two others coming. So it'll be 19 probably by the end of the year, you know, so and I've never seen that so many. Back office is exploding, but yet you guys were one of the first to think about the user and how they use it. There's other platforms that are on the market that literally the users don't touch or never see. You know, agents would never see a report or anything like that, but that's not brokerman. And so we're seeing a major shift in how people think about back office. And so this will be really, really cool to see Greer, what comes out of this, because I think Boomtown's the right company to take back office and make it sexy. Listen, I've got to, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I will say that uh, Andrew and team and, and the product have become a lot more uh, sexy over the last uh, month. Uh, Andrew, I'll, I'll give you credit, man. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, uh, the more you dive into it and, and, you know, I think the, the, you know, what makes it so interesting is just how it automates workflows and, and removes that unnecessary, um, you know, chance for error. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's really, you know, probably, you know, happens quite a bit in, in the world of back office and, and just, you know, compliance and those types of things. But, you know, I, I agree, uh, you know, it's interesting to hear the stats, Jonathan, around, you know, how many uh, back office solutions are out there. Um, and I think they're all trying to tackle slightly different problems. Yes. Uh, but, but really, you know, I, I think that, I think that one of the one of the observations and one of the one of the reasons why after hearing from our customers how important this 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 part of the system was that that was lacking within Boomtown um, that you know that that Brokerment possessed 
is is the idea that you know that you know that you know you we're we're going to need to create a better consumer experience. We're going to need to create a more streamlined experience for agents and the teams that support them, um, and and that's really what gets me really excited about this. Is just um, that that the you know the the groundwork is already laid in terms of what Andrew and team have built, um, and uh, and you know I just see a lot of possibility for us to really you know think about. The consumer experience. I mean, anybody on this call knows that you know that you know the real estate transaction experience hasn't changed a whole hell of a lot in the last fifty years, and uh, and and you know that's that is one of those things that's out there that it's like, man, wouldn't that be really interesting to tackle and to create an experience on behalf of our customers like Brad that you know that really stood out in the mind of the consumer and and really you know got got them at the end of that transaction you know dang that, that was the smoothest real estate transaction that i've ever been through from home search all the way through and beyond and i think that's one of the things that that really makes this uh an interesting opportunity and brad let's go to let's go to you and let's let's do the kind of the magic wand exercise you know, if you were to wave a magic wand, maybe two, three years from now, what do you hope comes out of this and what, and what will it mean to your business? Yeah, well, you guys have touched on it. A couple of things that I'd love to see is you know, I want to be a click away from knowing my ROI on any lead source. I want to be a click away from knowing the ROI on any agent, you know, just as, as an owner, as a team leader or a broker owner, you want to know that return on investment for your tech spend and for your time of training and commitment to your agents. I just want to click and see the, the full top of funnel all the way to the end of the transaction. How many times did that happen? What did it cost in order to make it happen? And is that a good spend of my money? And that that's ideally, I mean, right now we're doing it. It's just, a, you're jumping through a lot of hoops. Greer mentioned, you know, spreadsheets are involved and you're importing and exporting data and trying to compare them side by side and hoping your formula is right. <laughs> um, I, I'd love for the tech to just do that for me. Let me click and see it. And save um, me time. Yeah, save me time, right? And 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 let me trust the numbers even more, right? So so that I think is a, is a given. It needs to happen quick as possible. I love I would love that. Um, the next thing is is really just a better experience for my agents, right? Because they're going, they're the ones in that in between handoff from you know the front office to back office moment. Can can their experience be better? And Greer just touched on that. If they, if my agent's experience gets better, then they can deliver a better consumer experience. And ultimately, that's what I'm after as a brand, as a as an owner, is can I make the consumer experience better? And in order to do that, I think you've got to free up the agent's time so they can focus more on the consumer instead of the paperwork or the, the data piece of it. Yeah. And, and I, I think that time creates better experiences for everyone. No offense to Andrew and JP, but let's get Milton, Milton out of the basement with his stapler get them up and make, make back office a part that everybody sees and it's no longer hidden in a file cabinet, you know, type of thing. So yeah. I, <clears throat> I like where th those, those are, those are two very important things. And I think the third one is just the, you know, roster management and managing data from back office to front office. When you launch a new website, spin up, you know, new campaigns, you bill for that type of stuff. It's nice to see, the, the insights and data kind of starting to co-mingle there, uh, that's, that's going to be a big time saver and energy saver for your staff too. That one's less, less uh, out there with the consumer, but for your staff as well. Yeah, at a, at a bigger picture, the industry, you know, we typically think through a funnel, right? We're, we're moving things through stages of the funnel. And as simple as that may be on a whiteboard or in concept, it, it's always multiple tools to go from stage to stage to stage, you know, okay. you're in a CRM and then you're in a document offer creation software and then you're, you're back to your CRM and then you're, you're binding and you're back into your back office engine to process it and you're constantly moving between systems to unify that into one system would just make everyone's life better. Yeah, it creates less siloed data. And then like the, to your point earlier is, yeah, the reporting, all the all the ROI reporting on agents. Um, you know, you're spending a lot of time recruiting and to turn around and be able to know, are am I profitable on an agent? Am I actually making money? Or are they trending down this year? You know, we, things like that, that just can be really strong on the reporting and analytics side. Well, when you have that level of confidence and, and simplicity of reporting, you're, you're all of a sudden measuring behavior and yep. not what is said in your organization 
not like a stand-up meeting or a one-on-one -on -one consult. And you're like, no, let me just see if what you're saying matches and what you're actually doing. And that behavior shows up in the transaction data, the lead management data. And both these systems are really good at that. We, we constantly talk to our agents that behavior is the truest form of communication. Don't listen to what the lead says. I'm not going to move for six months. Like their behavior says they're about to make an offer because they favorited six properties this week. <laughs> So like, you need a tool to tell you that behavior matters, but it also matters from an agent accountability standpoint. Yes. You, know, you said you made your calls, but I don't see any logs. Where was the behavior? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we see, we see a lot of that. And um, just to add to kind of like, you know, agent experience, I believe that um, since 2020, we've seen a lot of push in terms of, again, going virtual, going online. And the first fear that you typically have, okay, how do I work with my clients? Uh, how do I get new listings? How do I, you know, place new offers, all of that nature. But I think that, you know, since 2020, agents got neglected a little bit. And that's where, again, um, unifying helps a lot with the agent, agent experience. Because at the end of the day, this is, again, the top dependency for any broker you have your agents retain your agents make sure that they are happy at that point of time they're going to be providing really good and solid experience to your end consumer to your buyer and to your seller so i see that a lot of things related to from onboarding your agents how you do that and how successful you are so, you know onboarding your agents online virtually right to ultimately giving them access to any tool that provides instant visibility so they can understand where they are at. They don't have to go to their broker or admin or someone to really do some insane deep dive so they have everything in front of them. So that's really important. And especially we all talk here about contract to close or lead to close, but um, there are a lot of use cases that you've been thinking about post-closing because there are a lot of things not not much of our accounting, but how can we take this data and reutilize it again and get more business out of it and make sure that we understand what's coming next. So this is, again, potential is endless in terms of combining all this together. Yeah, not, not to offend either one, Gur or Andrew know how much I uh, appreciate them and like them, but there's the candid answer of like, right now we onboard our agents uh, and broker met great onboarding process. Once they're onboarded and broker met, I try my best to never have my agents touch it again because I want my back office staff managing that and that integration, the click of the button to hand it off. We're able to do that. In essence, the only reason I don't want that to happen is it's just another thing for an agent to learn and master and keep up with and less is more in my view of that from an agent experience standpoint. So we just take on the burden at the staff level of any of that kind of stuff. But in a perfect future tense, I'm proud enough and it's so simple enough that that is no longer the case where I have to hide one from the other. It's all unified in one simple experience. That's the win. I'd, I'd love to see for an organization like Brad's or for, for brokerages or franchises, we've also got data is one thing, but the insights that you glean from the data or the coaching that could come from that data could be so powerful. And there, there's not a lot of great products on the market for coaching, accountability, goal setting, you know, stuff like that, where it's like, hey, if I can generate this many calls and this many leads, and then ultimately closing the loop on that too, where it's like, where are you tracking in your production? Imagine what you could do, Brad, with that, with that system, where it's like, we're going to onboard you, we're going to set your goals, then the back office system is going to tell us, are we meeting those goals? You know, like, that's when it becomes the holy grail too. Yeah, I, I want to build my custom pipeline that matters to the, you know, the phases that we're tracking through that funnel and set a benchmark and, and let it auto notify the agent and the, the team leader or the coach or whoever it may be who's holding them accountable to that. It's like, well, you're exceeding this phase, but you're behind at this phase. Why? Let's click and see why. Yeah, great. Uh, Greer, if you were to do the magic wand, what are you going to see? three, two, three, four years down the road. No, I think, I think the, the, uh, the concept of, of the data integration that you mentioned, Travis is, is really, um, really interesting and, and really kind of spurs a lot of, of opportunity, not just on, you know, the reporting side, but the insight side. Um, I think that, you know, that, you know, people like Brad and Brad kind of, you know, I'd say is, is somebody in a category, you know, you know, 
of, of his own in terms of how sophisticated he is. He will do the work to bring and merge the, that data between those two systems. But a lot of times, most most you know small to medium sized brokers are, are flying blind on that because they you know either don't have the expertise, the technical expertise to to do that merging of the data, or it's just too time consuming for them to to do it in their day to day lives. And so. so being able to bring that one click visibility that, that Brad was mentioning in terms of, you know, the profitability of, you know, of your team members, the profitability of your lead sources over time and how that's trending is, is uh, you know, I just think incredibly valuable, inc incredibly unique because uh, Travis, you're right. There's not a lot of companies out there that, that are able to provide that, you know, that, that insight because they don't have the, the, the data married up between their back office platform and their front office platform. And, uh, and this is what really enables that. Um, beyond that, I'd love to be able to, you know, again, you know, the unification and, and being able to give Brad what he wants in terms of, you know, keeping the agent in one system. And, and you know, that would allow us to, you know, to you know, do something similar to what we did with, you know, Real Contact. Real Contact, uh, the, our internal concierges use the Real Contact software every single day today but the agents no longer touch it. They touch success assurance, which is integrated directly into the agent experience within Boomtown. And so I see the same thing, you know, in terms of what, what we can see here is make it very simple and, and, and friendly for the actions that an agent needs to take to be, you know, exposed within the Boomtown platform so that they never have to leave. And the information about where things lie in terms of the steps in the process so they can have an intelligent conversation with that consumer uh, that's going, that client that's going through that process, visible to them within Boomtown. So they don't have to switch from platform to platform. Uh, but, you know, enabling again, you know, and, and this allows for the focus for, you know, for Andrew and team to focus on the user experience for everybody that's supporting those agents, whether it's a broker, an admin, a staff member, you know, all those folks on the, you know, compliance teams to, you know, to, to really utilize that software and, uh, and have that experience. So, um, so, you know, that, that would be a, a magic wand situation for me and, uh, and, and really start to think about, you know, again, you know, sort of, you know, the longer term vision of, of, all right, you know, how do we, how do we really pull the pieces together and make a more seamless real estate transaction for the consumer as well? Well, uh, next week, uh, on Tuesday, T360 is hosting the virtual T3 Summit. And one of my sessions next week is all about collaboration in residential real estate and, and more, more specifically real estate tech. I have, I have Constellation, KB Core, and Moxie Works on that panel. And um, the, where I'm going with this question is, Andrew, you have always been a big supporter of API Nation and just APIs in general, being open, plugged in, aggressive, proactive with APIs, you're literally one of the few companies that, that are in this industry that I can, I can point to and say, that's a company that knows how to connect and plug in. Um, and what does this mean? What does this acquisition mean, Greer or, or Andrew, from that perspective? I guarantee you've got other brokers that use Dot Loop or Skyslope or, or whatever. Uh, how, how do you continue to then navigate those conversations of collaboration or vice versa, brokerment with a KB Core or LionDesk or something like that? It's a really great question, Travis. And I think that um, you're right. Um, we've, again, when we started day one, we had API. That was our game plan. You know, we, we don't want to limit anyone in terms of ability to connect to build any integrations or partnering with companies like API Nation to help us satisfy those needs to integrate. So our documentation is absolutely public and anyone who has access to Brokerman can start again using API. So that's been, again, the overall vision and the post acquisition as soon as merged with Boomtown. Again, there's a lot of things, a lot of discussions around what we're gonna be doing together. But at the same time, which is again, what we ex expected to be, we do see all the other companies that we work with from Chime to Boom, uh, I apologize to <laughs> Lion Desk to again um, Commission Sync. We've been having conversations around some next extensions, next connections, next level adjustments because their platforms change and our platform change as well. So that's where we do not see limiting ourselves in any manner. 
And we know that, again, even though consolidation happens in prop tech, at the same time, giving that freedom of choice is more like obvious direction. So we would like to keep supporting that as much as we can and keep exploring different options, how we can, again, satisfy brokers and teams with their technological needs there. Great. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just I would just back that up, Travis. I mean, everything that Andrew said is is what we were aligned on from the initial part of that conversation is, you know, listen, I, you know, I think we can create a great experience, you know, marrying these two platforms together. But, you know, but if we can continue to create great experiences and give, you know, brokers and teams choice, um, then let's continue to do that as well. And so, so yeah, we're, we're, we're totally, you know, we, we integrate with a lot of, you know, back office systems like dot loop and, and, um, and DocuSign transactions rooms is another. And, and, uh, and so we're going to continue to maintain and, 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 you know, sort of, you know, like, you know, similar to what Andrew was talking about, invest in those to, you know, to give our customers that are using those other tools, a, a good experience. And so, so, you know, we just, you know, plan on fueling, you know, putting more fuel on the fire, so to speak, uh, to continue to innovate on, on our core platforms, um, you know, but also be able to invest in this unification as well. Nice. Well, that's, that's music to JP and I's ears because, um, you know, we, we went through a phase where there was some maybe less collaborative closed loop systems in real estate and it was causing issues and it's putting brokers in a very awkward spot. And I know even under a new regime, Lone Wolf is changing their perception. I think they're getting ready to launch an open API, which is probably a surprise to everybody on this call. And so like there, there's um, that, what Andrew said, if I could bottle that up and just basically force it down all really? the other tech companies, that's exactly what I would do. Um, so kudos to you guys for uh, recognizing that. And um, we'll finish up with, you know, are you guys seeing any frequently asked questions that you want to address publicly um, with, uh, with the, our listeners or, or when we send this out afterwards or any takeaways that you want the audience to know? So Greer, we'll go to you first. Yeah, I think I think one of the you know one of you know one we just hit on you know are you going to still continue to support the integrations that you have and and across the board for Brokerment and and Boomtown the answer to that is yes um, so that that I think has been a big one that I've that I've heard quite a bit Andrew on on our side um, you know I think um, you know other ones um, pop in there Andrew if you've got any other ones that you've heard. Yep, absolutely. I can take it from here. So in terms of the typical takeaways and questions that we hear from existing client base or potential clients, first of all, it, it's really super exciting moment because uh, we haven't done much of an announcement about the, again, um, next level integration, et cetera, but we continuously see a lot of potential um, new clients, brokerages, exploring solutions, relying on good reputation of Boomtown coming to BrokerMint, exploring different things. So that's been interesting, somewhat unexpected, but, you know, fantastic experience for us here. In terms of supporting existing ecosystem, that was a typical question I had to go through with top level clients across BrokerMint ecosystem to reinforce the message that, yes, Open API, yes, we will not make it. As Travis mentioned, we refer internally political API. We're not going to be limiting anything. We're going to keep, again, providing all this um, to our clients. That was our, again, the biggest probably highlight um, across our client base, what we heard. And the second, which is super, super exciting takeaway, and that's what we, I believe um, the message was extremely consistent and again, unified across the leadership um, of both organizations. Keep growing, keep scaling, even pre-announcement of the acquisition, we kept building plans in terms of how we're gonna be extending teams and resources and adding more and more people. And many clients that we had an interaction with that was the first question, Are you? will you still keep hiring, keep adding, keep building? And the answer to all of those questions is yes, yes, and yes. We do have a lot of new things that we released post acquisition a few weeks ago, as well as, you know, we will keep enhancing that. So that was really unexpected, but all great things that we have to say about this recent experience. Great. I've got a frequently asked question. Can I ask them both real time? <laughs> there you go. That's why you're here. <laughs> Fire. 
what's going to be the first thing to expect next um, as a, as a user of both platforms already? Like what what would be like a a fair expectation for me to have on when something moves forward together? That that's a great question, Brad. And what I would say is the answer is uh, you know. I think we had you know two boomers down there um, earlier this week getting feedback from you on on what you wanted to see uh, about this acquisition. That's just going to continue. Um, we're going to continue to uh, to meet and and talk with our mutual customers and those that are evaluating both. I mean the the market reception, uh, as as Andrew kind of alluded to, um, just from the the market as a whole, um, folks like you know you Travis and Jonathan. As well as you know, you know, obviously from our you know from our mutual clients like Brad that are ecstatic about this and, and the opportunity going forward. Uh, but even even you know just you know our customer base and the brokerman customer base and and prospects of each um, you know are are just really really excited. So, that, so you know the the excitement is there in in regardless of what we've kind of said is that next step but Brad it's about finding you know figuring out where we can where we can create the most value is is uh, as soon as possible where we can you know kind of start to really make the the value proposition um, you know uh, great uh, for you guys um, in prioritizing those efforts uh, whether that's you know with you know with kind of the, the team that will be working on this integration and uh, and so I don't have a very clear answer to that yet, but we're going to take a couple of weeks and, and be very thoughtful about how we uh, put a roadmap together here to um, to create create value over time. Yep, and I think that um, Greer um, a good point there that I know that Boomtown all all the year has been extremely um, again uh, client feedback driven, and it's been again the mission for Brokerman as well. So this is, I believe, fantastic moment for both organizations to involve clients and again figure things out, especially when we talk about unification and client experience. We do have a lot of ideas and lists, but I don't think that you know the time is right for us to talk about what is going to be. It's going to be that next level of due diligence that we need to make with clients like, like yourself, Brad, and make sure that we completely understand all the potential there, which we can, again, quickly enhance and maybe have some long-term two, three, four year vision in terms of what it's gonna be, but it's definitely the right opportunity to, again, um, use this strategy that both organizations have be, been using for you know good solid years in terms of relying on clients' feedback first. Well, I, I, I appreciate okay. that. I, I, as a user, we always want faster, quicker innovation. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I will say, I'd rather you get it right. Boat. I'd rather you get it right. And I, I appreciate the diligence. Yes. Very good, everybody. We're coming up to the end here. I want to thank Greer, Brad, Andrew, and Jonathan, our team at T360 for putting this together. Um, uh, come join us next week at the T3 Summit on Tuesday if you want to catch more on, on these topics and big topics happening in the industry. So thank you everybody. And look for the recording sent out by email if you're on this as well. Um, appreciate everybody. Have a great day and um, stay happy. Take care guys. See thank you guys. guys so much.